Hi there, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through Chapter 10, Proteins, Workers of the Cell. Now, before we can even talk about proteins, we have to talk about amino acids. We, we have to know what those are. Proteins are made from them. So we have to understand what amino acids are. We have to kind of go through it kind of a little bit slowly to figure this out. So I'm going to draw amino acids in two different ways. There is one way, and there will be an R group where R is the rest of the molecule. And that's an amino acid. Here we have our amine. Here we have a carboxylic acid. So I think you can kind of figure out where the names are coming from. We have an amine, and we have a carboxylic acid. Abbreviate that to amino acid. And that's an amino acid. Now, there's a few things we have to know about the amino acid. First of all, they're always drawn with the nitrogen on the left. Always. That's just how they're drawn. Okay, that's just a kind of a um, an accepted way, if you will, that we've all agreed we'll draw our amino acids with the nitrogen on the left, and the carboxylic acid on the right. And we'll do that even in proteins. For all the amino acids and proteins, they're always drawn from the, from the nitrogen on the left, carboxylic acid on the right. That's just how it's done. Now, this carbon here is known as the alpha carbon. And it's the carbon between the amine and the carboxylic acid. There's only ever one in naturally occurring amino acids. Okay? And the difference in all of the amino acids is the R group. All the amino acids have the same structure. It's just the R groups that are different. Okay? So every amino acid will have this and this and the alpha carbon and the R groups will change. Now that's one way they're drawn. Now the other way is like this. And this is called the Zwitter ion, which we're going to talk a little bit more later on. Okay? So just, you know, hear the name Zwitter ion. Don't panic. We'll talk about it later. There you go. And then the R group. This is another common way they're drawn. This is called the, the Zwitter ion form, where you have the amine is protonated and the carboxylic acid is deprotonated. In other words, this is the a, a conjugate acid. And this is a conjugate base. Okay. Notice the amine is basic. And this is an acid. It's a carboxylic acid, right? So a lot of times people draw them like this. It depends on your preference. I actually prefer this over here. I think it's a little easier to understand and students don't panic as much when they don't see the Zwitter ion. But both are, are correct, actually. And your book uses this way. Most books do. Um, so you just have to accept that they're basically the same thing. Okay. This and this are the same. Just drawn a different way. Just accept it. Now, uh, we don't need this. Now, there are 20 different naturally occurring amino acids found in most proteins. There's 20 different ones. And they're only different at the R group. They're only different there. Everything else is the same. The amine, the carboxylic acid, and the alpha carbon. They're all there. It's different at the R group. Okay. Now, there's numerous families that are found in um, amino acids. You find alkanes, you can find aromatics, thioethers, alcohols, thenols, thiols, amides, carboxylic acids, and amines. Didn't I tell you you had to know the classes of compounds or the families of compounds, whatever your book calls them? I told you you had to know them because it's going to make everything else easier. So hopefully you memorized them. Now, in our body, we have two basic, uh, two basic classes. I shouldn't say basic. We have two... Uh, distinct classes of amino acids. And those two classes are nonpolar and polar. We'll talk more about that. And polar can be further subdivided into acidic and basic or neither. It can also be neither acidic nor basic and still be polar. Okay? Now, in your body, there are 10 amino acids, or not in our body, but in our life. In our life, there are 10 amino acids that must be consumed by food. You have to eat them. Uh, they're called the essential amino acids, and there's 10 of them. So half the amino acids we need uh, to make our proteins come 
from a food source. So keep that in mind. A complete protein meal can be obtained by combining plant foods. There you go. I guess the book wanted you to know that. Here we go. Now, these are the nonpolar hydrocarbons, or uh, amino acids, pardon me. Let's look at them carefully. Now, the side chains here are drawn upside down. This, your book draws them upside down from where I'm used to drawing them. So the little purple sections right here and here and here and here, here and here. What do we notice about these side chains, these R groups? They're made of carbon and hydrogen or simply hydrogen. They're hydrocarbons for the most part. Now, I know, yes, I know, this is not a hydrocarbon. It's simply hydrogen. But they're, but for the most part, all of the nonpolar amino acids are hydrocarbon R groups. They're called nonpolar. Recall, when we worked with fatty acids, this was nonpolar. It's a hydrocarbon. So this is nonpolar. It's a hydrocarbon. This is a hydrocarbon. This is a hydrocarbon. This is a hydrocarbon. This is aromatic. Another form of hydrocarbon. This is a hydrocarbon. They're all hydrocarbons except for hydrogen. They're all nonpolar. Nonpolar means you're a hydrocarbon R group. Now, there are exceptions to that. For example, here's a, a sulfide. This one is nonpolar. Uh, it is. For reasons we're not really going to talk about in this course because it's a little bit beyond the scope. It just is nonpolar. Here's one. has a nitrogen in the ring. You would think it would be polar because of the nitrogen. It can hydrogen bond. But for reasons that we don't really talk about in this class, it is not. It is nonpolar, not polar. And it has to do with a whole bunch of stuff that take organic chemistry and you'll get it explained to you uh, thoroughly. But unfortunately, in 1032, we don't explain it. So these are kind of exceptions to the rule. Uh, methionine and tryptophan are exceptions to the rule. But the rule is, if you have a hydrocarbon side chain, you are nonpolar. Again, exception, exception. Personally, I'm not going to test students on exceptions. I'm going to test you on rules. Okay. And here's proline, the only cyclic uh, amino acid, and it's polar, uh, nonpolar. It's got a hydrocarbon side chain. Here are some polar amino acids. Now, just like in the nonpolar version. Nonpolar amino acids had only hydrocarbons in the side chain. Polar amino acids have oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen. They have something that's not a hydrocarbon. Okay? Something that's not a hydrocarbon. So take a look at this one. That is an alcohol. Therefore, there's an atom there that's not hyd hydrogen or carbon. Therefore, this is not a hydrocarbon. Therefore, this is polar. Again, another alcohol. Polar. Another alcohol, more, more correctly called a phenol, because it's attached to an aromatic ring. Polar. The OH makes it polar. It can hydrogen bond. Thiol. Polar. Now these are also polar, but... Yeah, they're polar. Sorry, there's no but. There it is polar. The amides are polar. Now here, these are polar, but you could also call them acidic. Because right there is a carboxylic acid. Now it's the, it's the conjugate base of, a con, of an acid, but it's definitely acidic. Again, carboxylic acid. And again, it's the conjugate base. Okay, these are conjugate bases. Sorry, sorry about that. These are conjugate bases of acids, and they are most definitely acidic side chains. Okay, now basic amino acids. Basic amino acids. Uh, what I like to do is I say look for a nitrogen in the side chain. Just look for one. Nitrogens tend to be basic. There are exceptions. The amides are exceptions. The amide side chains. Remember these. These are amides, right? These are not basic. Don't worry too much about them. I'm not really going to test you on those because they're kind of exceptions. 
and for reasons that you can't possibly understand, they're not basic. Okay? But these regular old amines that are not amides are basic. Okay? So we have nonpolar, hydrocarbons only in the side chain, or the R group. Polar, anything but hydrocarbon in the side chain. So oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, polar. Um, acidic, a carboxylic acid in the side chain, in the R group. Basic, a nitrogen in the side chain, excluding amides. So these, not basic. Okay? I know it's a little confusing. It's, it's not as bad as you think. It really isn't. Okay? Hydrocarbons, nonpolar, not a hydrocarbon, polar. Polar, if you're a carboxylic acid, you're acidic. Polar, if you're an amine, you're, nit you're a basic. And that's how it works. Um, yeah, we just went over all that, didn't we? Classification of amino acids. Look at that. Look at me working out in front. You might want to uh, jot, pause the video and just jot this, some of this stuff down if you like. Um, we just kind of went over it. Didn't know it was there. Uh, don't worry about abbreviations. If you want to read about this, go ahead. And uh, we'll call that the end of this video. And uh, with that, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.